Hey everybody, it's CVH here, and today we'll be playing some Merrick Battle Mage on the ladder. Uh, it's nearing the last couple days of the month, so I wanted to play some uh, some more competitive decks as usual. Uh, try to maybe secure a good finish. Someone suggested Merrick to me in one of the comment sections of a recent video. So that's what we're going to go with. Uh, we're actually playing a bit of a different version, as you can see from the deck list. Uh, if you're familiar with the more traditional versions of Merrick, you'll notice a few of the cards are different. Uh, this is basically based around the uh, the Scientist's build. Uh, he's, a, he's played Elder Scrolls Legends a lot, he came from Duelist, but um, I talked about his build a bit on stream before, I don't know if I mentioned it in a video, but he cut a lot of the popular cards such as uh, Cunning Ally, an Ice Storm, and Earthbone Spinner for more proactive threats like Lumbering Ogrim and Blood Dragon and a bit more Prophecies to sort of help us out. Uh, if we get in those aggressive situations, we run less reactive cards and we sort of rely a little bit harder on our Prophecies, but it does run some unexpected card choices which I think could help us out on the ladder. If people don't necessarily know what we're playing, uh, just a sec. Right, I wanted to move my mic slightly. We should be fine now, but yeah. Also, in his list, there were three Dark Rifts. Obviously, this was pretty much a staple in Merrick, or almost a staple in Merrick, uh, before it was nerfed to three Magicka instead of two. Uh, I don't know if he's particularly updated the list since that nerf, but I definitely didn't feel like it was worth including it, so I made three adjustments adjustments to it. I included a third copy of Raiding Party and Comlearn Sentinel, which were both two ofs in his list as well as a copy of Reeve Blademaster, which, as we all know, got buffed from a 2.5 to a 3.5, and I thought, hey, uh, it's a threat, it's pretty proactive, it doesn't get lightning bolted, which makes it even better in some matchups than Earth uh, Lumbering Ogrim, so yeah, should be good. <clears throat> as soon as we find an opponent, we'll see if we can take some people by surprise. Perfect timing. Perfect timing. Got a scout. And he's kind of low rank too. I guess that could be a good sign. So Scout's one of the classes that has a, has a pretty big problems with uh, Lumbering Ogre and Markarth Bannerman. If I knew it was Ram Scout, I'd actually be tempted to keep them both. We don't necessarily need a two. I'm going to ship the uh, the Breton Conjure for sure. It gets Murkwater Witched and that's just no bueno. I'm tempted to just keep these both and see how it fares. If we get anything on turns two or three, I think it's pretty ideal. So let's just give it a shot. Rapid Shot's not... I mean... The, the worry here is that it's not Ram Scout. The worry here is that it's mid-range Scout and we could get aggroed out because he does have the ring, but that's kind of the risk. We sort of set ourselves up to be in a very good spot against Ramp, but uh, if he is playing mid-range and he does have a good curve, we just kind of lose. Alright, I mean, that's more indicative of Ramp, actually. Because the games typically go long enough to where you draw the Brotherhood Assassins. I don't really think it's worth using Rapid Shot. Rapid Shot's a pretty important card if we do wind up drawing Breton Conjurer because it's our best way to activate it ourselves so it doesn't get Murkwater Witch. He's probably not going to be playing Murkwater Witch until he sees that. He could at the moment think we're aggro, though he might have had an anti aggro mulligan, but that's all the more likely that he has a Murkwater Witch in his hand. So I think we'll just pass and keep the Rapid Shot. Maybe we Raiding Party next turn. He's one of the Nords to take care of the 1 1 if we don't want it to stick around. And we don't, right? Because the 1 1 can uh, help proc Leaf Lurgers and finish offs in the future. I this day will be mine. That would have been nice to have last turn so he could start pushing in the other lane, but then he would have developed his 2-2 in the other lane. <coughs> Excuse me. Alright, okay, so let's just raiding party, I think. Um, yeah, it's it's like pretty questionable whether or not it's worth sending a Nord into the, the ward. It's probably... I mean, it's questionable whether either of the Nords will need a trade, right? We could just try to counter pressure. Because if he's Ramp Scout, I don't think he's going to be attacking and breaking runes anyway. We could just Ravage her in the right and start pressuring like that, make him answer that card. He's really not trying to play the value game, per se. If I ravage it right, it might also keep the illusion that I'm an aggro battle mage that just drew incredibly poorly. Now it's just raiding party. Magicka efficient. And I'll send one into that. Sending the Nord into a 2 doesn't really do anything for me, I don't think, at this point. He has taken some early chip damage, which you don't normally see happen in this deck. Ramp Scout. I guess uh, it's just an Ogrim kind of turn. It could be Ravager Wardcrafter. For both of those right, that's incredibly weak to Murkwater Witch. Ogrim is still weak to Murkwater Witch. Uh, I could play the Ogrim in the left versus the 2-2. Two -two. 
That means it won't immediately die to Murkwater Witch. I could even send the Nord into the, the ward at that point. Uh, so he can't easily attack it and proc Leaf Lurker. Because he could still attack in and do that, but he would lose his 2-2. Whereas if I save the Nord, it won't happen. So yeah, I think I will do that. Wasn't like a max value rating party or anything, but it could help us. Territorial Viper. Well, I was gonna get Viper in either lane because I just can't gain cover. Feels bad. Alright. Wow, he's just going in. I guess this is maybe a mid range scout with Ungolem. I guess it's fine in the deck. Alright, we'll play Markarth in the right, so we actually do play around Viper now. Pretty straightforward there. We could Wordcraft her next turn maybe and keep it healthy. Chances are power plays are going to start happening to me. Losery Mimic, some of them still run Black Room Necromancer. Suppress is a card that just got played on me. <laughs> Suppress into Viper. Here I was, I was like, I'm definitely not getting Vipered at the very least. Oh well. Now would be a great time for those additional prophecies to have kicked in. I'm not quite that fortunate. <clears throat> Alright, magic efficient plays are Ogre Mordcrafter, Ogre Ravager. Um, if we're trying to take over the board, Ogre Wardcrafter seems the best. We can play Ogre in the right, and Wardcrafter in the left. The Wardcrafter will trade one for one with the 2-2, as will a Ravager if I play it over there. So Wardcrafter just makes more sense, because it's less, uh, less important on board, and it's actually getting a good benefit. Next turn we have Belligerent Giant, which can help us take over the board if he plays a Solitary Threat. If he if his Solitary Threat is a Bone Colossus, we're going to have a problem. Fortunately, for Illusory Mimic, he's been using some of his charges... Yeah, I think it's Ogre Mordcrafter. I really don't like Lightning Bolt's just ridiculously slow here. As of now, though, we need to really stop taking damage, so this is the last bit of damage this turn I think we can afford to take. Teach you to mess with me. He caught me by surprise himself. Confound you! Yeah, he's just going in. He recognizes what's important in this matchup. <laughs> Drawing Brotherhood Assassins. If that's the only play, though, we're fine. Totally fine with that. I do love a good fight. Okay. The longer the odds, the sweeter. It was not the only play. You can't help but just kind of miss Ice Storm sometimes. Well, we can trade the 2-1 and do the 2-2. Two -two. That, that part's kind of easy. Then we can Belligerent Giant away. See, that's what sucks, right? Because if we Belligerent Giant, it kind of has to be on the lethal. We could Belligerent Giant the guard and just go face for 7. Hoping that it would force him into a double trade where he'd have to trade both of those in. Uh... But likely it wouldn't, right? Because he has 9 on board. We could just die. We could just die. Yeah, I think we're in a very weak spot here. If we belligerent giant and go face, it's not very good. If we bounce that and attack that, he trades there. But I guess it helps us take over the board the most. Yeah, he gets the trade, but it'll be okay. At the very least, we don't die to a solitary cliff racer now. Or a solitary mimic. But Giant Bat's pretty easy to weave into, and he does have ring charges left. He's trading, I guess that's okay for me. Alright, Gatekeeper, we can actually guard in this lane, it's nice. Probably should do that. Probably need to guard in this lane. Yeah, and buff itself, so I can maybe trade one for one with Cliff Racer. Or at least set up a mimic to die to uh, a raiding party or rapid shot or whatever. I will protect the hist. I do not fear them. That's a quite interesting card to be playing. A few of these are very weird inclusions, right? Inclusions that make you say, "Wow, wish I was playing Ice Storm." <laughs> Those kind of things. We know his last card is a savior, though, so we can make our decisions based on that. We can Wordcrafter 
And Firebolt to take care of that if we want. We need to Firebolt that, though. That's the issue. Lightning Bolt Raiding Party, Firebolt. We're not really setting ourselves up for a power play next turn. And I really want a Wardcrafter this. So if I Wardcrafter, send it in with Raiding Party. And then I Firebolt that. I can also play Ravager. I think this happens. Yeah, yeah. It's a fairly easy trade. You know, he's going to have to trade in one for one with it. And I'm okay not taking that three damage. I would rather him have a trade on my 7 1. We have other ways to kill him, right? Yeah, he's going face. That's a savior, right? Yeah. And we can lightning bolt that. We save the bolt for that. I guess we have to bolt that now because it does breakthrough. We're not that on board, though. He only has the four damage coming in. It's about time for us to start worrying about trying to kill him as well, but it's so difficult because if he gets two more damage, we just lose. That's just what happens. I think the only way to actually guarantee to kill him next turn would be like Atramancy this turn. We could raiding party now. Um, I mean, we could we could cycle and try to find a firebolt. Yeah, that's probably what we first start with. Okay, I can keep one of my guys alive, I guess. Well, I have to lightning bolt though. If I hit for 7, 8, 9 this turn, and I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, plus 9 next turn, I hit for 9 and I have 19. Needs to have two health and be put over here or be a fighter's guild recruit. Alright, I think we're probably dead. But I can't guarantee that. Too late for you. That'd have been nice with the rabbit shot last turn for sure. We've gotta be dead, right? Like one of these has to have charge. Or be something that deals damage. I would be completely shocked. Save you. How much damage is that? Four, five, six, seven. I can play all of it. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. I can also trade here, so I'm not totally dead. I can Breton rapid shot, which is probably just needing to happen. Uh, I do want a full clear, however. Yeah, I can full clear by spending my Nords. Because I don't want to die to a silence. I definitely don't. So I can battle mace and more cool this up. Which also guards. And then I can double Nord into that. Or rapid shot it. Should I save the rapid shot for my Breton or should I use it now? Should I attack face this turn or no? I don't think so. Close ranks, let nothing through. Your blood will spill. Yeah, I don't think I attack this turn. If it's if he didn't have lethal last turn, if I don't give him another card, it's pretty unlikely that he would have it this turn. 
I will actually do this. I should have done it first before playing my Nord, obviously. Yeah, yeah, because we're trying to kill him next turn, right? Like, that's definitely what we're trying to do. So if we save the Nord Firebrand, it gives us two extra ping damage with the Supreme Atromancer. It's top decks are charged, that'd be bad. They cannot hope to oh, he can't kill that himself, can he? Then he Ravenous Crocs for lethal. Man, that would be savage. That'd be just savage. Mummify. Technically still lethal, right? 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, and 19. And uh, this does not add enough damage compared to that, since we have nothing to combo with it. So this is just the way to do it. This has to happen first, so we don't get wrecked in the first rune, right? 8, 9, 10. Yeah, I th this is bad. We just can't hit a prophecy in this attack, right? And we have two runes to go Your through. Yeah. They can't be a guard, then we'd lose, right? Unfortunate. So we attack, we deal 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Yeah, with the Mummify, we'd be fine. One guard would have been fine. Midnight Sweep is the killer. Because we deal 2, 4, 6. It's 8, 9. But unfortunately. No matter what we do, as long as that survives and doesn't get silenced. If we had Belligerent Giant here, uh, and we could kill that, uh, it's just too many things that we'd have to go right. We could Belligerent Giant that away, Sentinel Battle Mace the Nord and kill that and trade there and stay alive, but unfortunately it's not the case. We die to the 2 2. Or the hit. We die to the Kinsman Effect for that 2 2 or whatever, because we can kill that 2 2 if we really wanted to, but we just die to uh, the Kinsman Effect. Because we have no way to get rid of it. Alright. Well, we still have time. Let's play another one, sure. That was pretty upsetting. Double mummify. I also misread the deck for like the first few turns of the game. I almost got him though. Had lethal on hand. Sometimes you have to not hit a prophecy and you hit a prophecy and that's how the game is decided. Yeah, didn't think he'd be playing midrange, Scott. I just figured it would be ramp. More common on legend ladder. Alright, Q time, not too bad. It Who Speaks. I don't know if I've played this guy before at all. I think I remember the last guy from a few games, but... Don't know if I played this guy, I have no idea what he's playing. Let's find out. Crusader. Another deck which doesn't have Lightning Bolt, so I'm probably gonna keep it. We have the ring. Do you want Raiding Party as well? Ah, we have better twos. Let's try to find one of them. Or like a Daggerfall or something. Alright, well this gets executed, but meh. It's still good. And he full shipped. Good sign, I guess. So like I mentioned, I think in the last video, or the one before that, the, uh, the mid-range Crusader is pretty popular now. I guess you don't need to worry about being super aggroed out, but I misread the deck last game, so it's definitely possible. Your thing doesn't tell us a whole lot. I want a dagger fall really badly. Greetings. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna do it. Super huge payoff. Hope I don't get executed. I mean, he full shipped, right? Full shipped. And I'm pretty sure you keep executing against Battle Mage because you're scared of aggro, and even if it's Merrick, you have good targets in dagger fall and Breton and stuff. Yeah, that all indicates a slower strategy, too. You just wrap a shot for some value traded. Doesn't want me to get my tome value this turn. Unfortunately, it kind of worked, and I have nothing to do this turn whatsoever, but hey, he doesn't have anything on the board either, so we're not scared yet, I don't think. Hey, yeah, he absolutely did nothing. So, we ring out our Markarth and get Piercing Javelin. I'm down. Let's play it in the right, just in case he plays, like, random charge plus item. He can never be too safe. It's unlikely, but just in case. Pretty sure we're getting jabbed, or his hand is incredibly bad. 
I'd be okay with that. Could have been something cute, like Cloud Rest Execute. Alright, Greystone Ravager is fragile. We could just ring into Tome with it. I think that's okay. This should be good. Get Cycling. Ooh, nice. That's a solid play for next turn, too. Brett and Rapid Shot. Sorry, Cracking Knuckles is probably gross to hear on the mic, but... Yeah. Just played a lot of Rapid Shots so far. The forest will not suffer your presence. Decent. We can actually play Firebolt along with our Breton Rapid Shot play if we want. Is it good? If he got rid of my 5 5 with a jab, he could just attack over my 1 1. I guess it's good. The elements are mine to control. I don't know how many Firebolt targets we have in that deck anyway. Oh yeah, I kind of forgot about the new art reef too, even though I definitely included it in the deck. Like, I, I went to the collection manager, I was looking through my stuff, I forgot they changed the art on this card. Let's heat things up. Ah, he's heating things up, he's not gonna let me reward. Like Alright, well that's a pretty sick belligerent giant target. I think. I think that's just a play, I think that's just the play. Yeah. Should we diversify the lanes? If we diversify the lanes, we still have like a Wardcrafter if he guards this, shadow lane against my giant. Uh, play around Nimulating Blast. I don't know if there's like an established build, but I have to imagine that's a card I should play around. So next turn, like, we could just go double battle Mace Smork, but I feel like we have to, kind of, like, wait, you know, it's not the most efficient answer to tier, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alright, we can Wardcraft here and save our, uh, save our guy, though. Oh, my only magic efficient plays are, like, double four drop, which is awkward because then I just lose the added attack value if it gets pinged next turn. Or, like, pff, nine Magicka. Reeve, Sentinel, Wardcrafter. I guess it's just Reeve and Wardcrafter and stop complaining, right? I'll Wardcrafter in the right, and I might just play Reeve right, too. So my board's not super weak to a Dawn's Wrath. Like, I have a 5 attack and, and Reeve, which is essentially 5 attack over here. I could Wardcrafter in the left, but then I'm weak to another Skaven. If I wasn't thinking about Skaven, that would make the most sense, but I don't know. I don't think it makes sense at the moment. That being said, if you play Skaven... It doesn't do a whole lot else. Like, my Atromaster's looking pretty solid, right? If, I, if he wastes a board clear, then Atromaster's looking pretty solid. Yeah, let's just do it. He's already used two jabs, too. I'm sure he has Mana Core in hand. Like, maybe even two of them. Fortunately, Atromaster comes out earlier. I like our odds. By our service, we honor Kai. He's not going to use removal, and he's just going to guard. Maybe we actually do the battle maces. Man, this is looking juicy. Alright, so let's assess how bad mana core is for me if I Atromancer. I attack, attack. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Attack, attack. Uh, Atromancer. I have three things over here. One of them is going to die anyway. I think I just want a double battle mace. Yeah, my board's threatening enough. He has to answer this, and then we Atromancer, and then we Atromancer. Even if you mana core is right, like we're still gonna push a substantial amount of damage. Either Reeve is uncontested, or he has to mana core the Reeve. Alright, and if he does that, yeah, two things stick. Emulating Blast to kill a tutor up. <laughs> they will not get past yeah, we're pushing a lot. We'll just trade here first in case it gets interrupted by a prophecy. Does not. That's an 11 attack. Reeve, basically. Uh, I guess we'll split the lanes. Elements, the natural one. Put him at 8. 2 versus 2. 
And they have pretty equal value because this is incredibly valuable if we have another Atro in hand, and this is just gigantic at this point. Like, that's gonna connect for 13. It alone ends the game if it can attack. And he blasts again, obviously, so we played around that. We keep, you know, the two least valuable things, but they're still enough to kill him. Yeah, yeah. The victory is you. All right, we got the run back game. Nice, one and one. I'm okay with that. First game was uh, really close too. All right, hope you all enjoyed a little bit of Merrick Battle Mage on the ladder. As always, feel free to hit like. Feel free to hit subscribe to the channel for more strategy videos, gameplay videos, deck techs, other kinds of things. Some more nice. Um, yep, leave a comment with your thoughts. If you want to see anything specific on the channel, let me know, and I will see you guys next time.